So, in just a couple of hours, I will be on a flight to Sweden and uh, I thought I would share my kit with you guys for a 14 day trip, uh, two weeks, and it will be a nice sandwich. At the start, I'm going to collaborate with MCQ Bushcraft in the north of Sweden, then um, have a seven day hike in the middle on the high coast trail, and then I'll be collaborating with Tabjorn in the south of Sweden. To beyond ceiling and uh, it's going to be wild camping, hiking, bushcraft, everything you name of. But today I'm going to share with you all my kit that I'm going to carry with me on the camps and the hiking part of it. And uh, yeah, hope you gain some knowledge out of it and what I carry. It's a work in progress, like I say. And uh, I've noticed there's a few sales on a few items right now. So if you're watching right now, you can pick up a good sale. Um, yeah, it just happens to be that way. <laughs> so yeah, let's get started because I haven't got many hours left. So let's start from left to right. My kit isn't the lightest, but it's getting there. So for warmth, I love my swannies. I love my swan dries. This is a Swan Dry Wool Shirt Extreme and this will be my um, waterproof layer. It's waterproof, windproof and it can breathe, that's the main thing. It really keeps you warm. I properly tested it out in this video here where I went up a waterfall and it was very high wind. That was my good test of it and it does work because I had the original Swan Dry um, which doesn't have this layering system on the inside to stop the wind and make it waterproof. It's a bit of a material that feels a little bit like, um, you know, diving suits, swimsuits. That's all I can describe it as. But this time I went for a size smaller because they come in very big sizes and I'm really happy with how it fits on me this time. Um, my last one I got my size what is recommended but obviously they're meant to be outer layers so you're meant to have so many layers inside. I can still fit three layers in this and still look okay so yeah this fits me great. This does, this does, does the charm. However this is about uh, one kilogram something, just over one kilogram so it is heavy but it's so robust I can trust it, it's a bit of kit that um, I don't want to leave without. I mean you can go lighter with a layering system but I like this. I trust this. By the way I've set up a link in the description to lighter pack which is a list of all this gear with the weight and the links where you can buy it from. Um, so you know how much everything weighs and all together. I've also included my film equipment in that but I'll do a separate video on my film equipment because there's so much of it. Then I've got a down, down jacket from TOG24, if that matters, I don't know. But it packs down so small. The only thing is with down is that you can't get it wet at all or else it won't work very well. So lightweight, so good. Columbia Silver Ridge 2 shirt. It is expensive. I thought it wasn't worth it to begin with before I bought it but then when I've worn it out it's amazing it's absolutely amazing it breathes so well it's so lightweight the material and everything let me show you and um, yeah just they've put so much thought into the design there's a bloody uh, hole here for where to put your sunglasses in so you don't have to open your pocket or anything and then they've also done here to clean your sunglasses phone or camera for me, camera stuff. There's a little paddy here. You know, like what you get in your, your glasses case to clean stuff, lens wipe. Yeah, just very well thought out design. And I've also found personally that this has actually kept the wind off me as well. So it's quite, quite protective from the wind chill for a very thin layer, very good. It dries superbly well as well, dries very quick. Then into my thermals, I have gone for merino wool finally. 
but I've found merino wool is very delicate, especially from my last trip. This is the Icebreaker Merino Wool 200. I think it's called Oasis, whatever. But I'm really impressed with merino wool. Merino wool is very odor resistant and it regulates your body temperature very well. I can vouch for that. This is very thin, but it keeps you just standard temperature as you feel like in a normal room or environment, just really comfortable all the time. You don't get too warm, you don't get too cold. Perfect. And I'll probably just range a roll all these like this, you see, and then that's the, the bottoms. Same again, but as you see on my last trip, I wore my shorts with these out and it's already, and it's already fraying coming away a bit, so that means I've got to wear trousers with them or look after them better. Then what do we have? We have trousers. We have the four open trousers. Sweden, Sweden for Sweden. <laughs> Very hard wearing. Weighty for what they are. I haven't really done a review of these. But these again are, you can tell like the design aspects of this. The designers have had more time to actually plan these, this garment very well. Like you've got a bloody elasticated phone pocket, which is like one of my favorite things ever. So it's just protected in there. And then I love all these pockets, matte pocket. And if it's wetter weather or anything like that, you make them water repellent with wax and everything like that. However, I want to keep them hard wearing but breathable for this trip because I think it's going to be sunshine all the way. Berghouse Deluge waterproof trousers. Haven't yet yet to try them yet, but they seem good so far. They've got vents, so all this opens up, and it's got a vent so you can actually. Uh, make it quite breathable you might be thinking I'm crazy because they're waterproof trousers what you can do is open there's a zip inside you open the zip all the way up and then you can close the clasps so at least it will keep protecting your legs but also let the air out yet to try them get to try them though then my really comfy stretchy pinewood shorts the four-way stretch in the material and everything. Um, but say again, I like these just because of the pockets. I love pockets. Cannot get enough pockets for things. Yeah, very hard wearing, very good. Wore these uh, climbing that waterfall and very abrasion resistant, I might say, because um, I thought they wouldn't be. <laughs> But yeah, they held up very good job. There's no sign of wear or tear. But there is on my bag. <laughs> then for swimming, I've got, always take a pair of swim trunks. These are a nice, very fancy pair that I've just got from UB, E-U-B-I. Yep. Very high quality, very nice. Very junglified out there. Buffs are just so handy for many things. You know what a buff is. Yeah, just put it around your neck, put it around your head. Probably end up using it for the mosquitoes this time of year. Now, for hiking. Got some great tips off a guy called uh, Darwin, what's his name? The hiking guy on YouTube. He uses liner socks. I never knew what liner socks were before, but since I've used them, oh, my feet have been so good. So good, it's unbelievable. So you've got your normal thick socks, any hiking socks will do. Then you wear a liner sock, which is really um, slippy, slippy, comfortable material, and they breathe very well. You wear these inside these, and it just allows your feet not to create any hot spots or rubbing of any kind and it greatly greatly reduces the risk of blisters 
amazing. However, saying that, this is going to be my first long distance hike, so um, I've also got some blister pads in my first aid kit, just in case. Then these are something special. They're pants. <laughs> underwear. These are sheath underwear, American company, and they're eight inches long in the leg. But the, the best thing about these are the pouch for your crown jewels. It keeps your, your crown jewels and everything away from your body and you never trap your nuts again. <laughs> they are absolutely amazing. The material is so breathable. They, I, I'm at, well, I sound like a sales guy, but I'm just, I've been wearing these for a year. This is one that I've saved to actually show you so you don't see in my dirty underwear. I've actually tried these out for a full year and they are incredible. I finally open these. I'll be wearing these abroad. Oh. Yeah, so that's it inside out. So you've got a pouch. A pouch to hold your nuts. <laughs> and then another, it goes through there. And then pouch there. It is a bit of a weird thing to share, but when you're doing a lot of hiking, these are amazing. Very good. Very, very good. So the eight inch leg, because I like the boxer style, the longer the leg, um, the less chance it's gonna roll up. And uh, yeah, they don't roll up, they are amazing. The only downside to these is that if you want them to last, which mine have fantastic, they're still like brand new, the other pairs, not these. <laughs> you have to hand wash them. That's the only downside. But yeah, it keeps them as fresh as a daisy. There's a summer sale on for these right now. So go and check them out. Link in the description for sheath, sheath underwear. Not paid for this, by the way. Just uh, happens to be a sale on. So. These are some Columbia hiking boots I've got. These are Tech Light and they are out dry waterproof. They are so light. I got these because after a hike I had, um, I was wearing the German army paratrooper boots for so long and they're a kilogram on each foot. These are 300 and something grams as a pair. So that's how light these are. Bloody gorgeous, bloody, bloody gorgeous. And they are waterproof and supposedly breathable, but I'm not sure. Not quite certain on that. Then we come to the miscellaneous items right here I've got my I'll start down here <laughs> so as you carry knives and everything like this for the bushcrafty hiking scenarios I've got the Falkneven DC4 as you know that most people carry when they want to sharpen stuff because it's so lightweight and stuff but what I've done is in the sheath I've kept these four in there and then I've got some fine um, sort of sandpaper but finishing paper really fine and then to strop the edge I use the little bit in here so I've got Lily's um, opener knife she just got this this year we went to Norfolk and she picked it up from a fishing shop <laughs> just happens to be the hot new knife this year I've seen loads of people using it just simple design opens up like this this is going to be my food preparation knife. This is uh, very good, very, very good. I'm not sure if I would use this for carving or woodwork because the blade is very thin. It's not really designed for that. But yeah, for food prep, it's very good. And it's very light as well, surprisingly light. This is the number nine, I think. Then I'm not sure whether to take my bushcrafty knife. I picked this up on a market in um, Norway when I went Norway. It's a Scandi grind, so this is designed thicker and it's uh, made from some curly wood and then it's got bone and the handle. It's beautiful and it only cost me like 20 quid off a market. Very cool. It's sort of rat tang. It's not full full tang, but it's rat tang. So at least it's sort of usable to the end. I've used it a lot. Very impressed with it. I've got a leather sheath of it with a moose on it. But yeah, I'm still going to decide whether I take this or I just stick with the opener because really I need to cut weight. But then saying cutting weight, 
I'm still going to do my bushcrafty stuff and take a bloody uh, Laplander saw. Yep, standard Laplander saw. Everyone uses them. They're cheap, cheap, cheerful. I find they work really well. Came in super handy when I did my winter camping video. Cut in a, a really thick log, about that thick, and it worked a treat. It did take me about 20 minutes though to get through that. So yeah, <laughs> there is that. I've got this beautiful axe, which I'm still yet to uh, try, but I'm gonna take it on this trip. It's the Richt. Richt. Sorry, my Estonian isn't very well, but it's um, the Estonian word for journey or trip. And it's by a company called Fellmark. And they sent me this to try out. Damascus steel and the handle is lovely rosewood but it's so light for an axe like this and you can feel it's very nicely weighted all in the head where you need the power so I'm very excited to have a go with this and it comes with a leather sheath as well leather belt sheath to fit in there that is just under a kilogram Sweden is the place where you do all the bushcrafty things and you do fire and oh, I don't want to leave anything out. I don't want to restrict myself. Then this little gadget is a fire bellows. You can blow into it and uh, it's just easier to get a fire going, you know? And not get smoky eye. That's the main thing. I'll breathe it in. Very lightweight bag of char cloth that I've made. Loads of it because I'm going to do loads of fires. I may as well take it in case can't get any going I'll use that then to save time I've got my lovely lighter that Lily got me then for torches I've got the Erlite H2R Nova very good light this is my favorite one so far because the battery life is so long it is on the bigger heavier side but yeah, love this light, and it comes with a magnetic head strap. The main thing I love about this torch is that it's an L angle, so you can just clip it onto my swan dry, and it will face out, you see. And then also, I always like to carry a backup small torch, and this is the Olight S1R. And this happens to be on sale right now. <laughs> just happens to be like a summer sale on right now. The sale is on now until the 23rd, so go and check it out. You get two of these for a very heavily discounted price. So yeah, link in description, go and check it out. Great. And these charge by USB. I've got the titanium tokes pot. I think this is about a thousand milliliter. I like this because it's got a bale handle lid, mail handle and safety thingies and I can actually fit a full canister, a gas canister in there. Then a silicon foldable cup, lightweight, packs down really small, very cheap. Then the stove I'm running is the BRS stove, it's 25 grams, fits onto all canisters, good little stove. Then this is a cheap crappy stabiliser that I was talking about before for the gas canister. I'll have to pick up the gas canister when I'm in Sweden um, because you're not allowed it on the flight. Titanium spork, 17 grams. Then I've got the all-purpose soap. Might make a small portion out of this. Guys, I've only just found out that Sweden in the north this time of year in summer, it doesn't get dark. <laughs> it's golden hour all the time, even at night. So, what I'm going to do is take some of these, a face mask. And they're lovely herbal and they are quite warm on your eyes. Very nice. And yes, I do need the torches because I'm going to the south as well. That gets dark. Then I've just got this new seat pad which folds like this. Very cool because it folds so small. Very lightweight, just something to sit on to keep my ass dry. Then I'm gonna run for my sleep system, my shelter sleep system. DD Hammocks Superlight Tarp, three by three. Very versatile, very excited. I tested that up on the uh, Bleaklow. 
in high wind and it performed the task. Then because it's mosquito season, I'm gonna run the Sea to Summit Nano Mosquito Net, single person. And then this is my full sleeping bag sleep system all in one. I've taken it all out of the little bags and I've just put it all in one. So this is a bivy sack. This is the Special Forces bivy. by snug pack with the centre zip and inside I've got the Neuro, Neuro Hike uh, 280 gram down sleeping bag comfort rating of 8 degrees and that's all I need for this time of year so it's nice and I've got the sleeping bag liner inside just to keep it all nice and give me an extra bit inside that I've got an inflatable pillow so you see how easy that is to just bong out. And I've got the Thermarest Zoolite sleeping pad. So I can just do that and it's done. No need for the inflatable or anything like that. Um, too much messing about. I want to be hiking, getting going and yeah, just getting going and uh, doing stuff. And I found I can have, actually have a good night on this. So yeah, that's going to be on the outside of my pack. Ton of 550 paracord in all different lengths. This is this will do me. Then a carbon fiber trekking pole, uh, very lightweight. This one, I only need one. I'm just going to take one. I just find it handy when you get some really difficult bits going down. I use it as my GoPro mount. Also, this doubles up as if I need a uh, tent pole with my tarp. There you go, multifunctional and to whack away the bears or the, the grandmas. Then I've got a towel. This is quite big. I have thought in the past of cutting it down to size uh, in half. It's like bath size, big bath size towel. It's about 200 gram uh, travel towel. But uh, Lily likes it full size, so I might just keep it full size and uh, deal with the weight. <laughs> then I've got a compass to know where I'm going just in case I get lost. Then I've got electric shaver, lip balm. <laughs> One of those little um, tasters for a uh, perfume, that would do me for the whole trip. Uh, underarm, sun cream. Sun cream is very important, uh, 50 plus, for the UVB, UVA rays. A uh, little travel toothpaste, travel toothbrush. Um, hand sanitizer and a little thing of like skincare because you know gotta keep young you know <laughs> for the girls then this is what i've got my medikit down to this has got absolutely everything i need in in it it's a homemade medikit medic it's got a massive gauze bandage in there for any serious stuff mistakes whatever Little bandages, some Luco tape. I've seen that trick, Luco tape for, especially when you're hiking. Lily's little magic potions, little magic potion. This is for mosquito bug bites and to repel mosquitoes. Also, uh, it can be used for other things, which I don't know, because I don't know Chinese yet. Burn gel. The most important thing is this, Yunnan Bio. Yunnan Bayao, it's what the Chinese use up for absolutely everything. It um, speeds up healing at least two times as fast. Um, it just works, it's herbal medicines. It's antiseptic, it's got everything. It's also got a red insurance pill inside it, so if you get like really massive internal bleeding, severe internal injury, if you think you're gonna die, you take the red pill. A bit like Matrix. and. Uh, it should congeal the blood um, and stop you from dying really or bleeding out too much. So yeah, miracle, it's a miracle thing. Yeah, then some Chinese throat things, diarrhea stuff, painkillers, and uh, plasters for sore 
Chinese Yunnan bioplasters for sore muscles and joints and stuff. So yeah, that all fits in there. And then there's blister plasters and stuff, I didn't show them, but yeah. Sunglasses, earphones, wallet with all my cards, and then my phone. Oh, this was just a bonus section. I'm gonna take these to break ropes for um, breakfast. I'm gonna bag them up into separate bags. Gone for the ones that have uh, more calories in them, like nuts and berries and stuff, so. Then tracker bars, I love these. These are like peanut tracker bars. They have uh, got a lot of calories for what they are. And then some soya, soya milk powder. You know, a bit like milk powder we get in the UK, but this is soya milk powder, and it's actually not quite nice. All you do is add water, like a cup of water to the dehydrated powder. And Lily tells me I can actually use that with this. So I've got a bit of a milky porridge thing. And that's got calories in it as well, other than just water. Obviously I've, I've only just touched on food here guys. I'm gonna, I've got to buy a lot of food there obviously. I'm gonna try and cook some stuff, some little recipes and everything. So all of this is going to fit inside this bag. This is my Talon Osprey Talon 44. I went for the 44 just for that little extra room so I can take clothes like this, roll it up and put it in. And yeah, should do me good. And then obviously I'll wear all my camera kit on the outside of me with a uh, weatherproofing, so yeah. And this time I'm trying a, a new technique that I've seen other people do, which is a heavy duty bin liner. It's like a whole pack liner. Because before I was using waterproof bags, there's a one in the end. I still might use one or two for little stuff or organizers. Yeah waterproof bag because I don't know how wet Sweden will be. The weather looks absolutely fantastic uh, for the coming weeks but you never know. So that's about it for that so the next thing to do is just pack it all up and go to Sweden. I'm not going to show it in the bag you'll see it on the trip. So if you're interested in finding out any more about this kit uh, mainly the weight in particular uh, check out the link in the description which is lighter pack I've done a list of all my gear that I'm taking to Sweden and I keep adding to it. You can see what I use, uh, what I keep adding, what I keep taking away and yeah, it's all good. And especially on the weight side. You'll see that all of this will come to about 8 kilograms um, but my camera kit comes to about 5 kilograms of that. So yeah. <laughs> and if you're interested, uh, I will do a follow up video after the trip about how I carry my camera kits and um, all the camera kit I use to make these series, these videos. So yeah, hope you got some value out of this. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to join the expedition. Thanks guys.